going to take a look at the Nike Next% Percent and compare it to the Saucony Endorphin Pro to see which one of these carbon fiber plated racers would be best for us non-elite runners who's, who are going to be out there for four plus hours, maybe five hours. Which one of these will be best for us? Let's talk about it. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. If this is your first time here, my name is Brendan, and I am a non-elite runner who, yes, will be out in a marathon for four plus hours, and I'm not ashamed about that. I'm still a runner nonetheless. I upload videos multiple times a week all about running, running shoe reviews, to running training, and everything in between. If that's something you're into, hit that subscribe button right down there. It would really mean a lot, and why not hit that like button? All right, let's get into the comparison. Now let's get the elephant out of the room right away. The price of these shoes is quite a bit different. The Nike Next Percent, well, your child's not gonna go to that nice school. You're probably gonna have to eat oatmeal and rice for a few days. You're gonna have to pinch some pennies for a little while. However, on the other hand, the Saucony Endorphin Pro is quite a bit cheaper, coming in at 250 Canadian dollars to the 330 Canadian dollars for the Next Percent. So let's get into the comparison of the upper of these two shoes. Now, I have to note that both of the uppers are quite fantastic. I really enjoy both of them, but they're extremely, extremely different. So let's get into the differences, starting with the material actually. So the material on the Nike Next Percent is like a, I don't know, rain jacket type material. The vapor weave upper is out of this world. It's crazy cool. Compared to the Endorphin Pro, which is more of a traditional kind of fabric type upper. I don't know. I, I don't know exactly the material they make it out of, but it's pretty stretchy where the vapor weave material is quite snug and not flexible. Moving on to the heel counter here, the Nike Next Percent has a bit more structure through the heel and it actually also has a padded anchor collar. Both things I really enjoy. I like having a little bit more structure through my heel and the ankle collar padding is absolutely perfect compared to the Endorphin Pro, which is just Flim City. Look at that, it's just like you can compress it with no issue, there's no structure back here whatsoever. You do get this like little elf, like a Hoka Clifton mini elf heel flip here, and that does kind of help with lockdown, but I gotta be honest with you guys, the lockdown through the heel on the Endorphin Pro is like 10 times worse. I'm gonna put a number on it, and I think it's about 10 times worse than the lockdown on the Nike Next Percent, so that's gonna be something you have to be aware of. Now, using the runner's knot in the Endorphin Pro does help that lockdown a little bit, but I do think that it would benefit from a little bit of structure through the heel here. Another difference is the tongue. The tongue on the Endorphin Pro is gusseted, which you know, I love it. I love a gusseted tongue so much, but I typically like it because it helps with lockdown. But like I just mentioned, the Next Percent lockdown is quite a bit better than the Endorphin Pro lockdown. The tongue on the Nike Next Percent is not gusseted, so that means that it's not attached to the, oh, the walls of the upper here but I haven't had any issue with that. Actually, to be honest with you, the tongue has felt pretty good. I did mention this in my initial impressions that when I was first lacing it up, the tongue did feel like it was adding a bit of pressure on the top of my foot. However, after I actually got it tied up, the upper felt fantastic and yeah guys, so in terms of upper, I have to give the win to the Nike Next Percent. The reason being is cause that lockdown is just so much better for me and I really do appreciate having that a little bit of structure through the ankle and heel cup here. That's fantastic. Now, if you do have more of a wide foot, I'd opt for the Endorphin Pro upper probably just because it is that bit more flexible, but you know what? I have a relatively wide foot and I haven't had too many issues, but that's something definitely to be aware of when trying to pick between these two shoes. If your foot's pretty wide, go for the Endorphin Pro. 
Now moving on to the most important part of any shoe in my humble opinion, and that is the midsole comparison. Both of these shoes, the Next% Percent and the Endorphin Pro, are using a PVAX based midsole foam. I did actually hear recently that the Endorphin Pro uses castle beans or something when they're making their midsole, so that's quite interesting. So we're already at plant-based midsoles here. That's pretty cool. Now, I will say though, that although they're both PVAX based midsoles, they are quite a bit different. Actually, drastically different. One thing that makes them so different, I think, is the shape of the carbon fiber plates in both of these shoes. The Saucony Endorphin Pro uses what they call an S-curve shaped carbon fiber plate. And what that helps with is their speed roll technology. You're like landing back here, and by the time you're at the midfoot to the transition, you can definitely feel the curvature of the carbon fiber plate here. In the next percent, I'm actually not quite sure what the shape of the carbon fiber plate is. I think it is just like kind of straight down here. Actually, yeah, you can see the shape here. It's not so S-curved compared to the Endorphin Pro. And what I find that does is actually make it feel more natural in the next percent. I did mention that I don't like when a shoe tries to manipulate my gait cycle, and I find that the Endorphin Pro does just that. I do like how smooth the transition is, absolutely. However, I do find that it tries to make me land and roll a certain way. Where on the next percent, I don't feel like I'm being that manipulated. I feel like it's letting me do what I want to do and just helping me do it. And then moving on to the foam itself, the ZoomX foam is way softer than the Power Run PB foam in the Endorphin Pro, absolutely. And that is abundantly clear when you're landing on the heel in the next percent. When I land on the heel in the next percent, you can seriously feel you squishing right down into that midsole, but then it's bouncing you right back up. That's the beauty of this ZoomX midsole. It's seriously like a trampoline, where in the Endorphin Pro, when I'm landing on the heel here, it just doesn't have that same feeling. I do feel a little squish, but when I feel the squish, it's more like I'm over pronating actually. I don't know, like I did mention that the next percent is a little unstable, but the Endorphin Pro, I think is extremely unstable in comparison to the next percent for me anyway. So that leads me on to my next point that if you do tend to over pronate, I would actually opt for the next percent. I definitely don't think that the Endorphin Pro would be a, like an absolute no, but I do think that the next percent is just that little bit more stable. I think the S-curve carbon fiber plate makes this shoe a little bit unstable. That's just my thoughts here after running in it for a few months now, but who knows? What do you guys think? If you find the Endorphin Pro unstable, what do you think it is? It's probably a mixture of the foam as well as the carbon fiber plate, but I don't think the carbon fiber plate is doing it any favors. And actually, one thing I have to note as well is the carbon fiber plate in the Endorphin Pro feels a lot more stiff than the carbon fiber plate in the Next Percent. Now, moving on to the oat sole, and guys, there's quite a bit of difference here as well. On the Endorphin Pro, they use this carbon rubber, and it, I haven't had any issues with traction. We're on the Next Percent, they use like this big block of like normal rubber here, I guess. And there's also two green pieces of rubber here that help with grip in the, in the heel there. I haven't used, actually I did use the Next Percent on a rainy day and I didn't have any issues on that day as well. So, but I, I find it really hard to judge oat soles, so I, I have to give it a tie here. Now we have to pick a winner. And for me guys, hands down, the winner has to be the Nike Next Percent. If I were asked to run a marathon tomorrow, wouldn't really go that well, but I guess I could if my life depended on it. I would opt for the Nike Next Percent for a few reasons. First of all, I do find that the foam here is much more forgiving than the Power Run PB. I find that when I'm compressing this foam, it's literally bouncing me to the next step. I don't know how else to explain it other than it does feel like a trampoline. And I actually did do a video explaining what I mean by the different foam densities. That's in the description down below. But the ZoomX foam is super soft, but also extremely responsive and it feels fantastic. Another thing, another big thing for me is that it feels much more natural to heel strike. I find that when I'm heel striking in the next percent, it's helping me along. And by the time I reach my forefoot, I'm ready to get off to that next toe step and I, it feels smooth. However, on the Endorphin Pro, when I'm heel striking, it feels a little awkward. And then by the time I'm reaching the midfoot for the transition, my foot's kind of rolling in and it's doing a lot of the work for me in terms of my gait cycle. And I don't want them to help me with my gait cycle. I find it a little awkward. I'm just being honest. 
Maybe if I was a bit more of a midfoot striker, it would feel a bit better, but where I'm not, I do prefer the ride feel of the Next Percent. Now, one thing that I am a little nervous about for the Next Percent using it for those longer distance runs is the snug fit in the toe box. Like I mentioned, the Endorphin Pro does have a bit more flexibility, so when your, heel, your feet swell, I think the Endorphin Pro upper will be a bit more forgiving for that. The Vapor Weave upper, I, I don't know how much it's going to stretch, so maybe there will be a bit of pressure towards the later periods of the run, but overall, there's just so much more that I appreciate about this shoe than the Endorphin Pro at this point in time. We still have to do more runs. I think, honestly, I would use the Endorphin Pro for a 5K run or a 10K run, and anything longer than that, we'd have to opt for the next percent. But even then, I think the next percent would be fantastic at those distances. So yes, I do think that I would spend the extra $80 for the next percent. If you're not an elite runner such as myself, because the Endorphin Pro, it might give you more harm than good, I think. If who knows? You know what, guys? Shoes are so unique. We need to try them for ourselves. This is just my opinions. I'm sure people have much different opinions than myself, especially elite runners who would be more of a midfoot striker, probably. They would probably have a completely different opinion than me. But there we go, guys. The next percent is my choice in this roundup right here. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for making it to the end. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I will catch you on the next one.